Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Reefer Studio. Today it's all about nitrate. I've done a little bit about nitrate, but I thought we'd investigate it a little bit more. The reason why I'm doing it is because I just did a test on my tanks on nitrate and all of them are reading zero. So it prompted me to do a video on it and let you guys in on a couple things that maybe you don't know. So let's get into it. Let's start out with the textbook definition of what nitrate is. Nitrate is the end product of nitrification, the process mediated by bacteria that converts nitrogen-rich organic matter into ammonium, then nitrite, and then nitrate. So how do we get nitrate accumulation in our tanks? In our case, it enters the tank through the foods we feed and unfiltered tap water that we might use for topping off for evaporation in our ATO. When I first started reef keeping years ago in the early 90s, using tap water was something a lot of reef keepers did and obviously things have changed since then. In 1993, my first tank was set up with tap water. Here's something you may not know about nitrate. It can also enter your aquarium through your water surface without adding anything to your aquarium. Something called nitrogen fixation allows nitrogen gas to enter the aquarium through the water surface as nitrogen makes up 78% of air. So what's a proper nitrate level? I like to run mine below five parts per million. It doesn't mean you have to keep it this low. Some reef keepers keep it quite a bit higher than that. The main disadvantage to higher nitrate levels is the effect nitrification has on alkalinity and pH. The formation of nitrate depletes the alkalinity in a closed system in the conversion of ammonium to nitrite. Let's talk about practical terms as far as our nitrate. Once again, I have to go back to what I've always said from the beginning is look at your tank, look at the coloration, the growth, and the health of your corals and fish and let that be the determining factor about whether your nitrate level is too high or too low. I've only tested more recently because of making this video. Normally I do not test nitrate unless something looks extremely off in my tanks. Here's a little tip for you in regard to this part here. If your glass is collecting microalgae really quickly, like within a day under your proper lighting, that probably means your nitrate is elevated. But if your glass stays clean for say two or three days after you clean it, then you know your nitrate level is probably not too high. Check that out. Over the last few years, some reef keepers have experimented with dosing nitrate and have favorable responses from that. My concern was always that higher nitrate levels might stimulate unwanted algae growth. More recently, I've seen high phosphate levels as the real culprit of unwanted algae growth. Nitrate concentrations in the ocean vary considerably from location to location, and also with depth. So surface waters are much lower in concentration due to the scavenging of various organisms, and it's often less than 0.1 part per million nitrate. So how does nitrate get used up in the aquarium? Nitrate is primarily used by microorganisms, and those organisms that get much or all of their energy from photosynthesis, including algae, corals, and sea anemones. So when you're reading zero parts per million nitrate in your aquarium, 
I've said this before, it doesn't mean that you don't have any nitrate in your aquarium. It means that all of your nitrate is getting used up and you're not showing any excess nitrate. So what corals benefit from a higher nitrate level? In my experience, zoas, leather coral, and mushrooms fare best in higher nutrient water. And green star polyp as well. I'd like to add too, guys, if you're going to be the type that is going to be very critical about your parameter numbers, then invest in a good test kit. At least the Hanna checkers, in my opinion, would be something you should use. So how do we lower our nitrate levels? Let's just say you want to lower your nitrate level. The first thing that might come to mind is possibly you're overfeeding so you can slow your feeding down. I'm not suggesting you starve your fish but you can reduce the amount that you're adding to your tank. As I've said many times before, water change will help reduce nitrate a bit, depending on the quantity of the water change. A 50% water change will have much more of an effect than a 10% change. From Randy Holmes Farley. Bear in mind that it really doesn't matter from the perspective of the ultimate nitrate delivery to the water column whether the food is eaten by fish or not. Nearly all of the nitrogen in the food will end up in the water column whether digested by a fish, coral, or bacteria and other microorganisms. Fortunately, there are better options available for nitrate control than starving your tank. Back in the days when tap water was used, depending on your location, there was vast amounts of nitrate in that, and that combined with using it in your ATO for evaporation makeup water could increase your nitrate. Protein skimming can help reduce nitrate. Remember, protein skimming isn't removing nitrate, it's removing the organics before they get a chance to break down and be converted into nitrate. And of course, in my opinion, the largest help in reducing nitrate is the use of a refugium where macroalgae is grown and collected and harvested out of the tank. There's a few others, more mechanical type filters to reduce nitrate, but I won't get into that here. I hope this helped, guys.